Amrita Shergill became the first and most famous female artist in India. She was the first painter to address women's issues and the untouchables in India. Her work had a substantial impact on Indian identity. However, in her homeland, Hungary, there is not a single work of Amrita Shergill in the permanent museum collections or even in the archives of the National Gallery. In the West, Amrita is not represented in world art history. She even wrote about it herself. Europe belongs to Picasso, Matisse, Braque, and many others. India belongs only to me. We will be painting a homage to Amrita Shergill, perhaps depicting her and copying her technique we will gain a deeper understanding of her work. Amrita Shergill was born in Budapest in 1913. Her Indian father was an eldest son of Raja and a spy. Her mother was a Hungarian opera singer. She received an excellent home education. Amrita began painting at the age of five and grew up surrounded by artists, poets, writers, and scientists. Her uncle was a famous Hungarian Orientalist and their neighbor was the leading Hungarian composer, Bela Bartok. Amrita herself played the piano and violin superbly. She studied art in Florence. An Italian sculptor was temporarily invited to their home to live in Budapest. In the early 20th century, during the heyday of modernism, a whole generation of Hungarian artists traveled to Paris. Amrita Shergill did the same. She ended up in the Parisian Academy of Fine Arts and in the studio of Lucien Simon, which was next door to Gauguin's workshop. Later, Amrita wrote that Lucien Simon taught not so much technique as he taught to listen to the call of the heart. During the Parisian period, Amrita not only studied the heritage of the great Western masters, Bruegel, Alce, Manet, but was also inspired by famous French modernists, Cézanne, Gagan, and Modigliani. From them, she inherits flattened volumes, sometimes black strokes, and a special primitized expressive form. In addition to the great masters, she was influenced by teachers and colleagues. So from Lucien Simon, she spies on genre plots of a Breton village. From Robert Umlo, large eyes. From Boris Taslitsky, political plots. Social stories and expressive views will later be reflected in the most famous works of the Indian period. In Paris, she painted her companions and mistresses and was increasingly inspired by the portrait genre. Her muse, Marie-Louise Chassagne, also inspired other students of Lucien Simon, Georges Ronet, Robert Humblot. In letters to her mother, Amrita wrote that female sexuality attracts her no less than male sexuality. However, the female images she created are devoid of objectification. She painted a gypsy young woman because she felt the personification of freedom in her. She portrays two naked girls and tells a story of friendship and female support. In her paintings of Indian women, 
we can see resignation to fate, the pressure of caste prejudice and doom. Upon traveling to Hungary, Amrita Shergill painted cemeteries, churches and landscapes filled with a sense of sadness and detachment. But despite this fruitful period, she is drawn to India because it is there that she seeks to embody her vocation as an artist. In 1935, she moved to India, where she became acquainted with Bengali and Bombay painting traditions. Here she finds a connection between art and religious practices, self-knowledge and storytelling. At this time, a new Amrita artist is born who connects two worlds, Eastern and European. Depicting social problems with European painting techniques, she finds her own unique style and becomes the leader of Indian modernism. A good example is the painting Woman on Charpai, where Amrita depicts a woman and a maid with a fan. She is simultaneously inspired by the red and green of Indian miniatures, on the other hand by Manet's Olympia and the Sleeping Venus by Titian. Sometimes Amrita is considered a neo-realist, although her realism is in the depiction of real feelings, the Indian way of life and social injustice. As a Hungarian, she allows herself a lifestyle that no Indian woman could afford. As an Indian, she empathizes with women's way of life and to some extent becomes a follower of Gandhi. At age 25, she marries her cousin, Victor Egan. He was a close, heartfelt friend of Amrita, who upon becoming a husband did not try to infringe on her freedom or interfere with her work. However, after a couple of years, Amrita writes to her sister that she is losing touch with Victor and is losing him as a friend. According to other sources, Victor was increasingly worsening from his wife's love of freedom and was overcome by jealousy. At 28, Amrita suddenly falls into a coma. According to Victor Egan, the cause is dysentery, but according to other sources, Amrita's condition was caused by complications after an abortion or poisoning. Since Victor was the only doctor who examined the artist and who did not warn his parents until the last day of Amrita's life, her mother accuses him of killing her daughter. Amrita's body was cremated in Lahore, according to Indian tradition, the next day. Translated from Hindi, the name Amrita means immortality, and although Amrita Shergill passed away very early, her name continues to live thanks to her works.